All right, let's go hunt those monsters. Hi everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm going to walk you through How to Win Monster Expedition, Alexander Pfister's latest game. Now, as you know, I'm a huge Alexander Pfister fan. Uh, Great Western Trail and Maracaibo are just a couple you probably saw in my top 50. I love the complexity and the strategy that he offers. And I can't wait to tell you how many times I've lost this game. Uh, never won, but I do know how to win. I just haven't done it yet. So don't mind me if I kind of get in my head during this video. You're doing awesome. How do you win Monster Expedition? Well, the first thing is you have to roll really well. Now, what does that mean? In this game, of course, you guessed it, there are a variety of ways to activate powers and improvements, so not everything that you roll, even if it seems bad, is lost. It's not a bad roll. Uh, there are just certain things you can do if you roll high dice, and there are certain things you can do if you roll low dice. So every player is going to have three camps, a blue camp, a yellow camp, and a green camp. And on their turn, they're gonna say, I would like to roll with my green camp. And they just select one of the three, and they look at the top of their card, and the card is going to tell them how many dice they roll. You always roll the one colored die of the camp you choose, but the amount of black dice changes over the course of the game, and you will get more and more and more as you improve your camps, and as you get monsters, you capture them, and they give you special abilities and improvements. Don't forget to pay attention to the abilities on these monster cards. There's the one that allows you to essentially roll an extra die every time, no matter what camp you pick, if you have one of each color, yellow, blue, and green. You roll the dice, and you essentially get to select one number and keep all the dice of that number, and you put them onto the camp you selected. Then you roll the remaining dice if you choose. Now there is a press your luck here, and there's going to be an element of selecting dice based on the likelihood that they will show the number that you want, or in this, some cases the number you don't want. You have to kind of stop so that you don't risk it. But there's a really great diagram of the breakdown of each of the dice and what they have on them. Essentially, the black dice are just d6s. They're just one through six. Now, the colored dice have different values and different numbers of that particular value that you will roll. So once you've rolled once and selected a number and taken all of the dice of that particular number, you are beginning the risky section of your dice roll phase. And that's the hunting phase. Nice roll. So if you choose to move on and you roll a number and only the number that you have depicted on your camp card, you essentially miss throw, which means you can't take a number that you've already collected. So let's say you've collected dice of value four, five, and six in three previous rolls and you roll your remaining, let's say two dice and you roll a five and a six. That's a miss throw because you didn't roll the numbers that you don't have. What you do in a miss throw, it's not hard and it's not totally devastating. You simply take the value on your camp card that you've taken that turn of highest value. So whichever number is the highest, even if you have multiples, you just take one and you put it back into the supply. You essentially lost your highest value die and you can stop or you can roll those dice again. And remember I had two dice, so I could roll again and hope I get a one, two, or a three. And that's how you play your round. You simply play until you say, I wanna stop, or until you've rolled all the dice, round after round after round, taking one value that you don't previously have on your camp. Now remember, you have to take all of the dice of that value you select. You're not allowed to take just a couple of them. So if I rolled three sixes, I wouldn't be able to take two of the sixes, leaving the third six. I would have to take all of them. Once you say, I'm done, you have a value on your camp. That value is going to let you hunt and collect monsters that are in a central display area. Now, just buy the right monster and get cages and activate adding cages. Just do everything. 
and that's where all the players are kind of vying for, or fighting for, uh, to collect because they give you victory points. They also give you special abilities, and the special abilities are going to give you that extra boost you need as the game continues and as you progress, you will get stronger and better, and you'll also get advantages that you didn't have earlier on in the game. Some of these other abilities allow you to upgrade if a particular die is rolled, or they allow you to steal cages from other players, or improve your camp if somebody else misthrows. Every 10 points of pip value can also buy you a cage. Now a cage is just a face down monster and the cage will give you fewer victory points but it will give you some victory points. Anywhere from one to three. As well, don't forget to improve your camps if you rolled one, two, three, or any other number that's triggered in your special play area. Yikes. My dice rolls are low. So if I rolled an 8 on one of my dice, I would upgrade this camp. And if I rolled any number of 1s, 2s, or 3s, I will turn my card 90 degrees for every die showing that value. The cool thing about upgrading camps is you get to roll more dice for that particular color, yellow, green, or blue. And if you upgrade to the max, you get two free cages. Way to max out that color die. After a player's taken their turn, play passes to the left and every player will go through that same process. So how do you win this game? You've really got to take a look at those dice and know when to stop, but also in some cases you have to get lucky. I think there are some moments where you would just like to have lots of one number show up so you can either buy a really cool monster with high value dice or improve your camps so that you can actually roll more and more dice on your turn, thus making it a lot easier to get more stuff next time you play. The other thing I would recommend is getting cards that activate on certain dice rolls that aren't on your turn because that means that you're really taking advantage of other players' turns before it comes back to you. And that means that you're getting more on your turn, essentially, than just playing a game all by yourself. So that's another recommendation. Make sure you invest in a monster that gives you an ability that benefits on other players' turns in addition to yours. One of the great things about this game that you should keep in mind is that you can earn points at the end of the game for having markers in the expedition display area for unclaimed monsters. Refill the wilderness. That's the way to get some banked points by the end of the game. What that means is you will get the value of the cage, which is the lower victory point on the monster card. Now, how do you get those points? Well, when you acquire a cage on your turn, you will refill the market area. Now there are supposed to be 10 cards out there, including the one card that never goes away that you have to essentially earn by getting 40 points of pit value. And in that case, you get six cages and it's just like a huge, just, <laughs> you know, wonderful influx of, of victory points, which is fantastic. But that card stays and anybody can activate it on their turn at any point. So you'll refill that expedition market area and every card you put in an empty space, you place one of your player markers on it. And that marker is going to stay there until anybody buys it, in which that marker just goes back to you, no harm, no foul. But if it's still there at the end of the game, you get the cage value. And that could be the difference in winning the game or getting second place. And I've seen it every single time. The player who had the most points in the expedition area at the end of the game, one. So that's my <laughs> best tip for you is get those points out there when you refill by selecting a cage or acquiring a cage on your turn. Don't forget those cage points are in the small box at the corner, not the big victory point box if you capture them as monsters. That's huge. So there's some dice. Get ready for press your luck, but there is some really fun light strategy in this game and I'm surprised at how quick the game goes and how light and fun the game is. It doesn't feel heavy and long and complex. You just select one of your three camps 
roll the dice, but every time you roll, you get to decide, well, do I want to keep rolling and risk what I've already earned, or do I want to stop with what I have? Sound fun? And that's cool. It's fun. It's exciting. It makes you want to play the game again and again. So I think this game is easily replayable. It's also um, optional for a solo play, and there are 10 like journeys or 10 expeditions that you can have and the back of the rule book is dedicated to the solo variant. Maybe you should play this game as a solo, Kim. It seems like you can't win this game even though you know how to win. So have fun with that if you don't want to play with other players because you're tired of losing like I am. But that's there for you in case you want to play it and maybe work up on those monster expedition skills. I hope my tips and suggestions on how to win Monster Expedition help you the next time you play Alexander Pfister's new dice game. Have fun, press your luck, capture those monsters, and have a great time with your friends. I'll see you next time. Okay, Kim, pick the right camp. You know which one it is. No, not, not that one. Come on. Yes. That's the right one.